Should you buy a workhorse or not? In this video, I will give you my opinion on the stock. Now, before we head over to the verdict, because I know that's what you actually want to see, there are a few very important things you need to know about workhorse, especially when it comes to the risk factors. So just stick with me. I will go through the details as quickly as possible. Now, as we know, workhorse will be having the earnings call a little bit later today. So we will see what happens with that. As you know, stocks are volatile and anything can happen in the short term. However, we look at the overall picture of the company. So let's get straight into it and have a look at the stock price first. So in the last six months, you will see this stock is down 65.75%. If we zoom out to the last year, you will see they are down 81.95%. So investors are definitely not happy at the moment. There's also a class action lawsuit against the company, which I'll get into a little bit later. So now let's go check out the stock overview first and then put them through our fundamental screener. First, looking at the stock overview, the stock is obviously trading under the ticker WKHS. They've got an enterprise value of 424.08 million. The current market cap is 492.9 million. So why is the enterprise value less than the market cap? Well, the enterprise value simply takes the market cap, then it adds the debt on top of that and it subtracts the cash. So in this case, as you can see, they have got more cash than debt on their balance sheet, which is a good thing, right? But I will explain that a little bit later as well. Moving on, we are looking at the net equity. This is in the positive, sitting at 140.9 million. The current share price is $3.13. The price to sell very high, 274. The price to book 3.36. The total shares held by the insiders, 7.16. The total shares held by the institutions, 34.4%. Now the short interest at the moment is 6.52, which is not that much. Usually when it gets to 10%, then I get a little bit worried. Now I quickly want to show you the yon year data because there are a few things that stood out to me. Looking at the year on year data, the first thing we look at is the shares outstanding. As you can see, the shareholder dilution is real. There is a lot of shareholder dilution taking place here, going from 50.4 million all the way up to 129.3 million. So shareholders are being diluted a lot. Now, a company like this who isn't really producing meaningful revenue, there are only two ways for them to get money. It's either through taking on debt or diluting shareholders. In this case, as you can see, they are diluting shareholders and it will most probably take place in the future as well, as long as they remain unprofitable. But moving on here, there is something I want to point out. Look at the revenue. So the revenue is only 1.8 million, right? The gross profit is negative 37.8 million. However, the net income is in the positive. So why is the net income in the positive? Well, this is because they sold their shares in Lordstown, where they owned about 10% of the company. They sold it at about $6.42. And that's why you see positive net income on the financial statements. But as you can also see, free cash flow in the negative, negative 150.6 million, which now takes us to the stocks screener. I'm not going to put them through our stock screener to see how they do in terms of the fundamentals, the momentum, the debt and the growth. The reason we do this is we want to screen companies to see if we should be looking into them a little bit deeper or not. So looking at the fundamental questions first, the PE ratio is not between 1 and 25. It's sitting at 30.68. Now the net margin looks absolutely incredible, 1,959. But once again, this is due to the sale of Lordstown. The net equity is in the positive 140.9 million. The dividend cost is less than the free cash flow because they don't pay a dividend at the moment. So automatically they qualify for this. The shareholders have definitely been diluted in the last three years. They've been diluted a lot. An extra 78.9 million shares. So now looking at the debt questions, the debt to equity ratio, is it less than 40%? No, unfortunately not. It's sitting at 127.93%. The current ratio is greater than one. The reason I look at the current ratio is to see if the company has got more current assets than current liabilities. In this case, they do pass this as well. Then looking at the free cash flow to debt, it's in the negative, negative 32.02%. Now looking at the momentum questions, as you can see, they didn't get any points for the momentum questions. Nothing has been going up year on year. Now looking at the growth questions. So the return on equity, the reason I look at this is to see how the management is retaining equity within the company. Generally, I have a benchmark of 10% or greater than 10%. In this case, it's sitting at 54.75. So this looks amazing, right? But once again, it's only due to the sale of Lordstown. The same goes for the return on invested capital that sits at 86.9%. It's also because of that reason. So it's not really related to the actual business operations. So looking at the return on assets, this is negative 20 0.32%. The earnings per share also have not been growing by a compounded annual growth rate of 10% or greater than 10%. So now let's go have a look at the percentages and see how they scored in terms of this fundamental screener. 
Looking at the percentages, it actually doesn't look too bad at all. The fundamentals, 60%, the debt management, 33%, the momentum, zero, and the growth sitting at 50%. But once again, I need to highlight the fact that this is only because of the fact that they sold the shares in Lordstown. So that is where you obviously have to apply common logic. In this case, looking at this fundamental screener, you have to keep that in mind because while well, this is actually not the true results of the actual business operations. Now looking at the risk factors. With any kind of company out there, you will have risk factors. And that's why we look at them. So these come directly from the annual report. Number one is the class action lawsuit against the company. So a bunch of investors came together. They are suing the company at the moment because they believe that the company made misleading statements around around the US Postal Service contract. Obviously, they didn't get the contract. The share price have been dropping. And what they are saying is, while the management were not transparent with the investors, they didn't say that they were hoping for a contract. That basically made it sound like the contract is going to happen. And that's why a lot of people started investing in the stock as well. A lot of them have been losing money. And that's why we always say you don't invest in a company just based on speculation, just based on news and potential contracts. What you want to look for is more details. Are the contracts signed? Is it a definite thing? If it's not, then well, then it's just speculation. Moving on, the regulatory issues are another risk factor and then compliance with the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. So they've already suspended delivery of the C1000 vehicle and they've also recalled the rest of the outstanding vehicles. And that's also why you have been seeing the stock price dropping in the last few months. So that is also obviously a big issue. They have to overcome this hurdle. Otherwise, well, it's not going to be sustainable going forward and they will not be able to produce any revenue from the vehicles. Now let's quickly go check out what the analysts say about the stock before we head over to my verdict. So looking at the analyst ratings, they are rating it a buy. They are giving it a rating of 3.5 out of 5. They are predicting an average price over the next 12 months of $7.58 with a high price of 14 and a low price of 4. Two are giving it a strong buy and then six are giving it a hold. Now we are getting to the verdict and what I think about this stock. Obviously at the moment you might have picked up that I think that this stock is a sell. Now just because I'm rating it a sell doesn't actually mean that you have to now go and sell your stock. Obviously in my case I just believe that there are just too many risk factors involved when it comes to this stock. Obviously you've got the lawsuit hanging over their heads, you've got the regulatory issues and then you've got the compliance issues as well which is a very big issue at the moment. The company is also not producing any meaningful revenue so I do definitely see that there are going to be a lot of shareholder dilution going forward in the future. In terms of capital allocation, I just feel that there are definitely better opportunities in the market right now. Now, if you want to see stocks that we feel are undervalued at the moment, simply click on the link coming up in this video right now.